This movie that I'm about to discuss has utilized one of the most interesting tactics in recent memory. I'm a horror junkie. There's no other way to put it. Ever since I was a child, I've always gotten a sick sense of pleasure from scaring myself into submission. But the truth is, I haven't really actually been scared by a movie in years. I saw The Conjuring in an empty theater, I've watched The Exorcist at 3am, you name a horror movie and chances are that I've probably seen it. I just truly haven't been scared by anything out there in a while, and I think there's a lot of you that feel the same way. A lot of the horror movies of recent years simply seem to follow the same formula, relying on horror mechanisms that we, as an audience, have merely adapted to. The good news is, I've stumbled upon a particular movie that kind of gave me, well, the creeps. This type of horror that we're about to discuss may give us an indication of where the horror genre is heading, as well as an insight into what simply scares us as people in the modern age. Before we get started, it's worth noting that October is finally among us. That means a slew of videos covering all that is spooky in the media world this month. To be notified of these videos, make sure to subscribe. I know this is a new channel, but it is going to be one that will be pumping out content weekly. So if you like these videos, show your support so I can devote more resources to providing an even better experience moving forward. But without further ado, I give you what I believe to be the scariest horror movie in recent memory. I used to believe that demons were the scariest form of antagonistic forces in horror movies. They represented a sense of terror that went beyond mere humanity. And this fact is true. Demons are inherently scary. But the truth is that there's only so many times you can tell a particular story without it becoming redundant. Like many of you, I grew up watching The Conjuring series, Insidious, The Animal Horror, Paranormal Activity, and many more. The basic structure of these type of films, minus Insidious, follow a pretty simple structure. A family moves into a house and experiences a series of disturbances. They ignore it, but eventually ask for help from either a paranormal team, a priest, or a medium. From there, they begin to shift their perception and realize that what they're dealing with is more than a mere angry spirit. This is the point where normally a particular character, usually a child, gets possessed. Then an exorcism ensues where the characters are forced to face their fears and complete their character arcs. It's not a bad formula, but it's something that I've seen too many times, and I think most of you would agree. Not every film follows this formula, but a lot of them tend to at least follow a similar structure. And as a result, this type of horror film is slowly dying out, just as the slasher and monster genre did before it. What this has created is a new wave of horror that focuses on concepts that lay embedded in humanity and our core psychology. Film studio A24 in particular has done a great job at this. They've had recent successes with films like Midsummer, Hereditary, The Witch, It Comes at Night, and even The Lighthouse. Other films like Get Out, Us, and Parasite have also headlined this new genre of humanity-driven horror. They play in the darker sectors of the human psyche and reveal things about our nature that we simply don't want to believe to be true. The concepts pushed by these movies lay grounded in humanity, in reality. And this scares us. Even the movies I just mentioned fail to fully scare me though. They are great films with complex narratives, but nothing has truly horrified me. Get Out scared me in terms of where we are as a human race, but not in a way that is deemed classic terror. When I say classic terror, I mean that feeling that you felt when you were a child. That true, inescapable paranoia that had you under the covers fearing for your life, haunting your nightmares and making that trip down the hallway to the bathroom a terrifying experience. I have been on the hunt for a film with this type of effect for years, and I think I found one. The horror of this film has its roots dug in with a specific scene and concept. This particular scene, in context with the situation, scared the living hell out of me. My partner at True Fiction Pictures, Seth, and I have been watching horror films recently for inspiration and structural ideas for our Halloween special coming up. Like I said, we watch these movies for structural inspiration at this point in my life. I mean, I don't really even expect these movies to scare me. I'm simply numb to them. Or so I thought. This particular night, was a late one. We had worked all day and it was about 11 o'clock at night. We poured some drinks and once again hit the couch with Ginger. This time, failed local news anchor Mike News had joined us after his night at the bar. He said, Hey Jim, give us something spooky, man. So, I hit Netflix and lo and behold, I found a movie called Creep. I looked at Crazy Mike and he gave me the thumbs up. Hopefully Creep will be creepy enough for this once proud reporter of the news. This is the point in the video where I assure you that I won't be spoiling anything major. The scene that I'm talking about is mostly in the trailer, so screw it. If you really don't want anything remotely shown regarding this film, then go do something else. Preferably watch our spooky movies over at True Fiction Pictures, link will be below. 
Anyways, I'm going to give you a brief contextual overview and then show you the scene that ended up scaring the living hell out of me, along with sharing the strange psychological effects that I felt afterwards and how they relate to the evolving horror genre. <sighs> Alright, here we go. The story of Creep centers around a videographer for hire, who takes a gig with a client who is, off the bat, a freaking creep. The day gets weirder and weirder, and we reach that point in the movie where the protagonist is trapped in a bathroom devising a plan to escape from this weirdo. He talks to the character on the phone and is told that he needs to leave the house ASAP and to stop asking questions. He just has to get out of the house fast as possible. In classic horror movie fashion, the lights are obviously out, so he books it towards the door. And then this happens. Are you, are you just trying to scare me? Or... Okay, well, well, I'm terrified, okay? You won. Now, will you just please step aside and let me go? Stop. Stop it. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Pretty creepy, right? I mean, when I first saw this, I wasn't necessarily terrified, but I was genuinely creeped. Haha, <laughs> get it? Creep. Anyways, it wasn't necessarily the brute impact of the scene that got me. It merely planted a disturbing image in my mind that was destined to reappear in the later hours of the night. It was late and I went to bed. Let's just say that I had a terrible nightmare that night. It wasn't necessarily one filled with monsters either. It was just terrible occurrences happening in front of my eyes as my life slowly fell apart in this dream. I woke up deeply distraught. But after a while, I brushed it off. Then it happened again. This time the nightmare was vicious. I woke up sweating and short of breath. I needed a glass of water. So I opened my door and looked down the pitch black hallway that led to my kitchen. I was terrified. I turned on the lights and even then I was watching over my shoulder. Expecting to see that goddamn wolf. That moment was when I smiled. I had finally been scared by a horror movie. I ate up every second of that childlike feeling of terror and went back to my bed scared, but with a smile. But why is this scene so scary? What made it stand out as opposed to other films where creepy mass psychos are roaming around in the dark? The first thing we have to look at is the fundamentals. This mask is just flat out creepy. Well, why is it creepy? That answer is simple if you just read through the lines. It's the imagery associated with the wolf. The head of the wolf is inherently terrifying on top of a human body. It represents a complete abandonment of what we have come to accept as civilized. The wolf represents the unhinged and unpredictable nature that lays in the darkest parts of our own psyches. This helps to explain why the wolf is equated with Satan in Christian mythology. This concept correlates directly with psychoanalytic theory and a lot of the ideas put forth by Nietzsche and Freud. They categorize this concept as the wild dogs in the cellar. Those deep human urges and desires that we have been molded to suppress and hate through assimilation into our social order. So, through a psychoanalytic lens, we can see why this imagery is so scary. The man in front of us is completely unpredictable. He has abandoned his sense of rationality, logic, and reason. There is no law and order here, merely pure animalistic destruction. This concept can help explain why I had the dreams that I had. It only gets crazier from here, I promise. This next part will have minor minor spoilers, but who cares? This shit is just too cool to talk about, so if you want to leave, do it now. Okay, so. The protagonist makes it out of his encounter with the wolf, and in the third act, he starts to admit that he's having nightmares. Not about really the creep, but about the wolf. Just the wolf. Now this plot point genuinely does not have any significance to the actual plot line. It really does not push the narrative forward. At first glance, I was like, that's just bad writing. But the movie was too good for that. I trust this director and the storytellers behind this film, so I dug deeper and it was around the time that I started having my nightmares that I soon realized why this plot point made its way into the final cut of the film. They use this to plant a seed. It encourages you to have nightmares. These scenes where the protagonist documents his dream experiences are there to encourage you to dream. To dream about the wolf and the psychological connotations that come with it. I don't know about you. But that is just creepy, and in my opinion, simply brilliant. The writers and director knew the subconscious and psychoanalytical impact of their villain that they built, and created a horror approach that, combined with the narrative, is truly horrifying. The movie Creep came out in 2014, and I think it's safe to say that they were a bit ahead of their time. Yes, the category of psychological horror has been around since the birth of storytelling, 
but it really utilized film as a storytelling mechanism and created an effect that I hadn't experienced in a long time. I highly encourage you to check out the Creep series, and I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Also, if you're in the mood for some crazy comedic horror, my crew and I made some films last year for Halloween that I think you would really enjoy if you made it this far into the video. We also have another one coming out this month along with the debut of our first feature film. All these links will be in the description below, and I really just can't say how much I encourage you guys to comment below. I really want to hear your thoughts on what you want to see for future topics and videos. I'm here for you after all. I promise. I won't be a creep.